Hello and welcome to a Sunday Reflection. My name is Paul Harvey and this is Life, Passion and Business. We're about helping you explore, finding your passion for life and the work that you do. But it's so much more than that. It's about finding clues to the big life questions. What does it mean to be successful? What is the meaning of life? If you're looking for more, then join me on this journey, where together we will discover through interviews, tools and tips, how to live life full of meaning, passion and purpose. Hello and welcome to A Reflection. So today's topic is about excuses or the lack of. It's been a usual week for me, lots of conversations and podcast editing. And what came to me this week was how much life has changed over the last 30 years. My guest on this week's show is Steve Jerrin, and he is one of many, one of these many young people that are coming to me. They are amazing people that are approaching me in their 20s and 30s who've made the choice of stepping away from the, the success model to do unusual things, stepping out. Now, they're forging a path of their own. In Steve's case, he's stepping away from what he calls golden handcuffs to create his own business in the music industry. You can catch the full story on Wednesday. Now, look, there have always been people that are outliers, people that did stuff. You know, my friends in my youth, there were some brave souls amongst us who stepped out and did backpacking across the Andes or went off to India for years at a time. And there always were these adventurers. And it was different in that time because it was certainly a it was a tough choice to do it in that time. The communications weren't there. And, you know, if you were going to go and rough it somewhere, you seriously were going to go and rough it somewhere. Now, that's not to put any less on these modern adventurers, but there is an interesting difference. I think a lot of the success that I'm seeing from these young idealists, it's down to modern technology and the access to information. Because if you want to know anything today, you go and search Google. If you want to see someone demonstrate something, you go and look at YouTube. If you want to hear something inspirational, you can go and listen to a TED Talk. As I said, over the last year, I've had some amazing people come to me. Brendan Kurosami is one. Now, he taught himself public speaking by watching YouTube videos and exploring the process and then went on to create a channel of his own and has become an amazing success in training people in public speaking. He's got over 14,000 subscribers on his channel now. Another young guest was Jonathan Nazario. I think he was un- I think he was about 18 when he approached me and said I'd written a book about personal development. And he had spent years looking at YouTube videos around personal development. See, the advantage that these young entrepreneurs have is there are 50 years of uploaded information, and probably more than 50 years, on YouTube and on Google. If you want to hear Tony Robbins, Deepak Chopra or Dwayne Dyer speak, it's all there for you. Everybody is there for you within the frameworks that we've now got. And what was interesting for me was the difference when I consider my own personal development journey. So, so my journey started when I was 27. I got involved in acting in a local drama group. And I was really excited to be in a play. I'd never been in a play before. And it was such fun. I really enjoyed it. But in truth, I was awful. I didn't have a clue. And I recognised that I didn't have a clue. And I had, But I was enjoying it so much. And I wanted to discover more about this. So I enrolled on a drama course during my summer holiday. I took two weeks out from work and went into the drama course. And I hadn't really read the title properly because it was a drama therapy course not really knowing what drama therapy was. Well, I discovered pretty quickly. By Tuesday, I was crying and I cried for the next two weeks at various times as I reconnected with all the emotional stuff that I had neglected and hidden over the past 15 years or so. Now, what was interesting, when I went back to work after this, I was a changed person. I was very different and people could see I was different. Couldn't put my finger on why I was different, but I was. I had shifted. There had been a real move in me. 
And when I explained what I'd been doing, people thought I was completely mad. <laughs> I was definitely one of the outliers, definitely a fringe person. But here's the thing, you see, in the early 80s and 90s, personal development was an unknown thing for people. There was no YouTube, there was no internet. If I wanted to read a book about personal development anyway, I had to go into London to Covent Garden to a specialist bookshop. It was called Watkins and it was an absolute amazing day out. It would just be going to Watkins and spending hours perusing books in there and then buying one and sitting in a coffee shop. And, you know, a genuine coffee shop. This was before the days of Costa and, and Starbucks. So it would be an independent, probably an Italian coffee shop. Knowing those, There were so many of those around the West End. Hmm, I am getting nostalgic, but it was a very different world when I discovered this stuff. And I have to say, it felt good being on the edge of that. And then if I wanted to do courses and things, it, it meant getting hold of specialist magazines that you could find in the bookshops, because you didn't find them in Smith's. Uh, and then going to events. There was a big event called the Mind, Body and Spirit show, which happened in London every year, and which was a huge, huge show happening at Earl's Court. And there will always be taster workshops and products and different therapies on offer. And if you wanted to get involved in particular courses, sometimes you had to find the author of books who would run courses. And you could then sign up on their mailing list and actually go and go somewhere, travel somewhere by, you know, by train or car to actually take one of their courses. That is the difference between person development then and person development now. Because everything is available to us. It has become completely mainstream. You know, the word mindset is almost in common vernacular now. It was not even thought about at that point in time. If you want to change anything, the answers to that conversation, the answer to that process is just a few keyboard taps away. You can access a video. You can download a book instantly to your computer, to your, talk, to your Kindle, to your phone. You can access a webinar or even buy an online training program. You can even listen to it on a podcast like this one. And that's why I think I am meeting so many young people that have had the advantage of all this information at their fingertips, who are making the life decisions that, that many of us make later in life, and they're making it at the beginning of their journey. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that just a wonderful opportunity? So while the younger generation seem to be discovering this information with ease, my generation, the older generations, it still seems to be predominantly women of a certain age. And the men seem to be resistive to this kind of change in personal growth. Another striking factor is when you look at the stats, only 10% of the world actively looks to change their lives. The other 90% are happy to take life as it comes. And here's another interesting fact. You, my friend, listening to the podcast are in that 10%. So wherever you are in your life at the moment, you are probably seeking change and looking to do things different. To quote a famous book by one of my um, all-time favourites, Dwayne Dyer, excuses be gone. Because there really is no excuse now not to move forward. The information you need is there. The problem now is not looking for it. The issue now is taking action. The point is the majority of people listening to this podcast have the power to take action. The point is the majority of you listening to this podcast have all the information in front of you and you have the power to take action and create the life you want. The only thing that stops you is you. As I said, this podcast is about excuses, the reason there are none. Okay, next steps for you, because there has to be homework. Pick something. Pick something you want to change. Decide how it could be changed and take some action towards it. It just takes the impulse to, get, to go there. If you would like some support with a project or action, don't forget there is Focus Coaching that is available and you can find details about that on the website lifepassionandbusiness.com. You can find it under the resources tab. And that is it from me for this week. Don't forget to check out the website lifepassionandbusiness.com. You can find all sorts of things under the resources tab as already mentioned. You can find the podcast by Jonathan Nazario. 
and with Brendan Kurosami. I will put links in this podcast where and they'll be on this page. You can so you can find out what these young people did. And don't forget that Steve Jerrins podcast comes out on Wednesday. And that is about a young man in the music industry who is bringing together musicians and composers. It's an interesting project. As ever, if you enjoyed this podcast, if you like any podcast, do support your content creators with likes, shares and feedback of any sorts because it's we all appreciate it. It's validation and it also supports the podcast, supports algorithm and helps people like yourself find good podcasts. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for your time and attention and I'll catch you next time. All the best. <laughs>